We start with the module body systems involved in exercise. Whatever we discuss in this module has to be in line with the body systems which are involved in exercise specifically. The body systems which are used during exercise are the musculoskeletal system, the respiratory system, the circulatory system and the neurological system. In addition to that, we also have the endocrine systems which have a role to play during exercise. Let's talk about the skeletal system. The skeletal system comprises of bones, cartilage, muscle and muscle includes a number of muscle fibers across the body, the tendons which join the muscle to the bone, the ligaments which join a bone to the bone. The muscle mass of an individual varies through different ages and as we know that the muscle mass for men is higher as compared to women. The muscle mass tends to increase during puberty and during adulthood we reach a peak muscle mass which tends to be maintained only if we are doing regular physical activity. Let me appreciate that the role of physical activity or exercise in maintaining the muscle mass is of utmost importance. What kind of exercise? It has to be a blend of aerobic and resistance exercise. As we exercise, we get the muscle strength. The muscle strength pertains to the length of the muscle, the size of the muscle, the quantity of the muscle. Now this muscle strength enhances our posture, our stability and prevents us to get injuries. The bone strength in turn is also dependent on the muscle strength. The exercise which we do stimulates the bone activity which in turn strengthens the bone and decreases osteoporosis. So we have to work towards the bone strength right from our early days of life that is starting from childhood, adolescence which are the major phases of growth where not only the bone is growing but if we put in exercise as a regular input in our daily uh, core then we are somewhere helping to strengthen our muscles and through muscles we are strengthening our bones. Thus the musculoskeletal system through bone and muscle provides us with the flexibility, with the movement, it provides supports to other tissue, it stores a number of minerals, it helps in the formation of blood cells and thus we need to use our musculoskeletal system extensively during exercise. Let us go on to the respiratory system. The major components of respiratory system are nasal cavity, sinuses, larynx, trachea, bronchi and of course the most important lungs. The functions of the respiratory system involve especially in relation to exercise is to increase muscle activity through the lungs so that we can get more oxygen supplied to the muscle cell and to remove excess carbon dioxide from the body. The exercise causes our respiratory rate to increase 4 to 5 times over our resting rate and this in turn helps in the gaseous exchange that is taking up more and more oxygen and removing more and more carbon dioxide outside the body which in turn gives more stamina to do exercise. The tidal volume or the amount of air we inhale and exhale in a sing single breath also is a very important marker for exercise. 
we all know that as we exercise the tidal volume of our body tends to increase and sometimes with good amount of exercise and a consistent bit of exercise it may increase 5 to 7 times. The respiratory system also relates to heart rate and we all know that when we exercise our heart rate tends to increase. When our heart rate increases there is an increase in the stroke volume. What is the stroke volume? It is the amount of blood which is pumped out of the heart at one beat and we see that when we exercise the stroke volume tends to increase by 30 to 40 percent. This increase in stroke volume is governed by our nervous system that is and the release of hormones that is our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system which in turn favors more beating of heart, more stroke volume and favors better gaseous exchange. The oxygen transport that is the additional oxygen which we get with the increase in the stroke volume and the increase in the blood returning to heart is a benefit when we are exercising. The respiratory rate also tends to increase when we exercise. As we know that at rest it may be 14 per minute and it increases to 32 or more than double when we exercise. Talking about target heart rate, whenever we exercise we have a target heart rate in mind and that has relevance to what is the substrate which we are utilizing when we are exercising. Are we utilizing carbohydrates? Are we utilizing fat? And the target heart rate varies from one age to the other and there is a defined formula through which we can calculate the target heart rate. So it will vary as per the age, it will vary as per the type of exercise which we are doing. That means the target heart rate for an endurance kind of an exercise would be lower as compared to the target heart rate for a resistance exercise. VO2 max is another term which we will need to understand when we talk in terms of respiratory system and exercise. Long term respiratory function calculates the body's ability for oxygen consumption during maximal exercise and this tends to improve as we exercise continuously and as we train. In other words, VO2 max is our body's ability to maximize on the oxygen which is available which depends on the ability of the lungs to hold the oxygen, to take in the oxygen and the ability of the blood supply to reach the working muscles, the gaseous exchange to happen and the release of carbon dioxide so that there is no fatigue at the level of the muscle. And as we exercise regularly, we tend to improve our VO2 max. Let's move on to cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system includes heart which is one of the most important organ of the body and we know that it is one organ which continuously beats till we are alive. So you can imagine the kind of strength this the muscles of this organ have. Besides heart you know the heart encompasses a number of blood vessels, you have the arteries, you have the veins, you have the capillaries. If you look at the structure of the heart, the, cham the chambers of the heart, the valves of the heart, the chambers wherein the impure blood is coming, the purification process which happens through the lungs and the purified blood moving to the whole body, this all comes under the purview of heart which is an integral part of the cardiovascular system. Now our body must manage blood flow to meet the demand of active muscles while still supplying other vital organs the blood they need to function. This is very important that during exercise the blood flow to our brain may remain relatively constant 
but we do find that the blood flow to other organs like kidneys and spleen may, be, may decrease. The blood flow to the muscles of our heart increases by four times during exercise and our body increases blood flow to our skeletal muscles by about 10 times during physical activity. So the message goes that the heart is essential to maintain the cardiac output, the reach of the blood to various organs, but it is under the influence of the nervous system of the body that the body decides what to prioritize when the blood is flowing. So when we are exercising intensely, the blood flow to the brain remains constant because brain is one organ which cannot, wherein the blood supply cannot be reduced, but the blood supply to the working muscles definitely increases many fold so that we can, we can support the need of the energy substrate and also help in the elimination of the waste products which are formed at the level of the muscle. Now we know that the cardiovascular system helps in distributing the nutrients, the hydration, removal of the waste products across the body. It also helps in maintaining body temperature by distributing the heat. It also helps in vasodilation and decreases vascular resistance and that is why the health of cardiovascular system is determined by a regular input of exercise which leads to lowering of blood pressure, decreasing stress on the heart these are all benefits which one accrues through exercise on cardiovascular system. There is another term which we must understand in relation to cardiovascular system and that is respiratory quotient. What is respiratory quotient? It is a ratio of carbon dioxide produced to oxygen consumed. Now it all depends on what substrate are we using for exercise, how we are training, what kind of exercise we are doing because each of these factors will influence the respiratory quotient. Remember as the respiratory quotient goes higher we are going to feel breathless, we are going to feel want of oxygen and thus one has to be very very scientific in terms of training for a particular sport for a kind of an exercise so that the RQ levels are maintained low. Let's move on to the nervous system which is another major component which affects during exercise. Our nervous system has brain, spinal cord, peripheral nerves, sense organs and it runs across the body. Our nervous system plays an important role in exercise predicting the level of activity and then routing resources to those body systems which are used during exercise and this is maneuvered through sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Our central nervous system also increases our heart rate early on in exercise and thereby helps in providing the blood supply to the working muscle. It also signals our muscles to take up more oxygen from the bloodstream. Then we move on to the endocrine system and we know that it is again a very very important system which maneuvers the entire functioning of the body. The major components of endocrine system include hypothalamus which we know is the central part of the brain which governs the working of all endocrine organ. It has a role to play in the water balance, it has a role to play in the regulation of appetite and very many important regulatory functions. We have the pituitary gland which is called the master gland because it secretes hormones which in turn govern the functioning of other endocrine gland. So you have the anterior pituitary releasing the adrenocorticotropic hormone the thyroid stimulating hormone, the growth hormone which is so very important in exercise because it is a anabolic hormone. The posterior pituitary essentially releases oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone 
which has a role to play in water balance and we know that water balance is so very important for exercise. The thyroid gland secretes thyroxine, triiodothyronine and TSH and calcitonin. We know that thyroid gland has a role to play in maintaining the basal metabolic rate and basal metabolic rate is also very closely linked with the exercise. Pancreas. Pancreas secrete a hormone called insulin and we know insulin is very vital for the uptake of glucose by the cell by the liver. Glucose being one of the most preferred source during exercise is thus closely linked with the normal functioning of pancreas. Adrenal glands also have adrenal medulla, adrenal, adrenal cortex. In adrenal medulla we have the epinephrine, norepinephrine and in adrenal cortex we have the cortisol which is another very important hormone which gets elevated during stress. It is responsible for muscle breakdown and thus you know through exercise we find that we tend to maintain the cortisol levels or lower the cortisol levels so that the catabolic effect on the body is reduced. Growth hormone as I mentioned earlier is again governed by the pituitary and is very very beneficial to the exercise program. Insulin again is a hormone released through the pancreas. Endorphins is another category of hormone which is released post exercise and it is one group of hormones which gives a feel good factor after exercise and is very and that is why we say that when you exercise regularly somewhere the internal stress is decreased and your mental state is very very good and you're more more of a happy person thus to conclude this module on body systems used during exercises we have understood that it is a combination of efficient working of a number of body systems that we are in a position to exercise well. We know the significance of our musculoskeletal system which is a base of any exercise program. The respiratory system without which we are not in a position to maximize the substrate which we want to provide to our muscles for better exercise. The circulatory system which helps us provide the blood supply to the working muscles, provide oxygens to the working muscles, enable the gaseous exchange which is very very vital for any cell to survive to get the fuel to, uh, to exercise and also not to get fatigued so that the toxic products are removed. In addition to that we have the neurological system which runs parallel to our circulatory system and if we cut across our body we find that there is a complete meshwork of blood vessels and nerves throughout our body. So which means the functioning of our all the systems whether it is the functioning of the heart, functioning of the lungs, functioning of the muscles, even functioning of the endocrine glands, it is all dependent on our nervous system.